Let us pray. We sing God's praise. We also realize how we have wandered from the ways God's Spirit leads. Let us begin our prayer for the day with a moment of silent confession. distances separate us from one another, O oh God. Remind us that by your Spirit, even at locations far away, we are one. Hear our prayers. Forgive us our sin. Lift us up in song and by your gospel good news in Jesus Christ. May all honor and glory be unto you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Then rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was its fall. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent this year, the Sunday before Palm Sunday. And it brings us in our work with the Sermon on the Mount and our following that to, as Emily read, the last set of verses before Jesus completes the Sermon on the Mount. The foundation for a living witness, life corresponding to Jesus Christ. I am not a structural engineer, yet for many years I have pondered this parable that Jesus told. My pondering started in the late 1950s when Dwight Eisenhower was in his second term as president. My preschool church group sat in front of Ms. Mary Jo Galbraith at the First Presbyterian Church of Gatesville, Texas. She helped us listen to Jesus' teaching here pondering as five-year-olds how excess runoff and floodwaters can sweep a house away if it is not constructed upon a solid base which will hold amid the flood. Ms. Galbraith impressed this reality upon us by teaching us the song, The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock, the rains came down, the floods came up, and the wise man's house stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rains came down, and the floods came up, and the foolish man's house went splat. I was not a structural engineer in 1958, but I knew that I never wanted my house to go Splat. So then Jesus, concluding his teaching from the hillside, is telling how God's wisdom prevails among God's people even when hardship and hell rush through our lives. 
I was not a structural engineer when Dwight Eisenhower was president of the United States, and I was not a structural engineer 55 years later during the second term of Barack Obama's presidency. But I was still pondering what Ms. Galbraith impressed upon us with that song. That's how in 2013, as Baylor University began to construct McLean Stadium within 250 feet of the banks of the upper Brazos River, I could see in my mind's eye the day coming when the shifting sands near that body of water became either too wet, the sands did, or too dry, and the stadium collapsing under its own weight, and the seats then washing down river near Texas A&M where they would be fished out of the middle Brazos, and the Aggies would shake their heads at the ignorance and the foolishness of those Baylorites, thinking that they were improving themselves by moving from a stadium built of steel and concrete on a limestone rise in west central Waco in 1949 and 1950 out to the shifting sands of the Middle Brazos River. Baptists of all people, I thought, and as I thought the Aggies would think, know about the wise man and the foolish man and where they built their houses according to Jesus. And I thought it was Jesus to whom the Baylorites wanted to listen. Well, about that time in 2013, I asked a member of First Presbyterian Church about my concerns. Some of you know and remember Gary Fry, a PhD civil engineer and a faculty member at Texas A&M. And Gary told me that I might not have as much to worry about as I feared. He said, depth and stability are the keys. It, if the piers to the new stadium structure are deep enough and stable, the flow of the river will not endanger the structure. So, he said, you don't have to worry about the stadium seats being fished out of the middle brasses by Aggies laughing at Baylor foolishness. The key, he said, is the correspondence of the soil and rock formations to the structure uh, design and materials and construction. Honestly, I still worry about McLean Stadium, but I know that Gary Fry knows what he's talking about. And I know that Jesus knows what he's talking about. Both talked about depth and stability and correspondence. De depth yields stability, correspondence to wisdom yields a lasting positive witness. My family's 80 acre farm about 50 miles west of Waco is, is bounded on the east by the Leon River, which is much smaller than the Brazos. The southeast boundary of the property is located where the Leon makes a turn significantly eastward. It's about a 100 degree angle turn and every time the river channel is full and water is running rapidly, fortunately, that's not too often, it creates soil erosion off of the southwest bank and up into the pasture there. And a few more bucketfuls of our pasture over the bluff move toward the Gulf of Mexico. If someone built a house in that pasture, let's say 100 feet back from the bluff, which edges into the pasture every time there is significant erosion, eventually the house would topple into the river unless the piers related to the foundation of that house are much deeper than the flow of the river waters. How strange would that house look sitting there on stilt-like foundation piers as its topsoil and its subsoil wash right out from under it. 
And how about your life and mine and the lives of others? Across the years since Ms. Galbraith taught me that song, uh, in the years first of Dw Dwight Eisenhower's second term as president, all the way forward to the years in the first term of Donald Trump as president, I've read history, I've known people, I've thought about the correspondence between depth and stability in life. And when there's corresponding depth and stability in life, a lasting positive witness to God's love and grace results. It's foundational. Such a lasting positive witness takes on new life and new life with others who follow even after the flood waters of years erode the topsoil of today. Like when my own life and your life move on. Pastor Emily this week posted a humorous yet truthful poem on Facebook. I think it was Facebook. Uh, anyway, it was filmed in the church's sanctuary. And she asks, if the church is people, where are the people? Now, this was a weekday. But the answer, of course, in this season of the pandemic, however long it lasts, the answer is that the people are scattered. And at least for now, during this pandemic, we are scattered. Moreover, there will be a time when you and I will not be living on earth, just as others who have died before us. The Church of Jesus Christ, as we have been part of Christ's community, as flawed as we are, will still have a witness of faithfulness. How? Because God has claimed us and shaped us even with our failings. And God has overcome enough by God's wisdom in Jesus, whose own life was taken, and yet it is the witness of that life of Jesus, his teachings, his healing, his resurrection, to where from God's spirit, followers and fellow citizens in God's kingdom years down the road or years down the river have been part of the building of the witness. Jesus certainly knew what he was talking about, but we may oversimplify the rock and the sand. Maybe the only place we have to live is a sandy or a loamy soil place. And yet if the piers of the foundation are deep, the structure of your life may at any point look out of the ordinary to someone. That someone may be to you. But what is, after all, the ordinary worth? Worth far more is the extraordinary love, grace, and wisdom of God helping you and me and others to live a witness which corresponds to the witness of God's costly love, grace, and wisdom, as in Jesus. That's the witness God intends and claims and seeks to grow and share for others through us as long as we live. And like Jesus, it's the witness God desires to exemplify for others long beyond everyone's last breath. Flawed as we are, may our correspondence growing in relation to Jesus Christ be what others observe and be that from which they too might grow. Any life witness corresponding to Jesus Christ, no rushing waters or pandemic will ever destroy. Isn't that the foundation better than any other? All honor and praise be to God.
Friends, let us pray. God who made us all, our healers are exhausted, God. Give rest to those who care for the sick. Our children are bored, God. Grant extra creativity to their caregivers. Our friends are lonely, God. Help us to reach out. Our pastors are doing the best they can, O oh God. Help them to know it is enough. Our workers are jobless, God. Grant us the collective will to take care of them. Our parents are losing their minds, God. Bring unexpected play and joy and dance parties to all in need. Our grocery workers are absorbing everyone's anxiety, God. Protect them from us. Our elderly are even more isolated, God. Comfort them. We haven't done this before, and we are scared, God. We pray for the church, that we stand strong beyond these walls and reach out into the world with love in a time when we cannot physically reach out. Grant us loving hearts, patience, and hope for tomorrow. May we be faithful stewards of your love and care in this difficult and strange time. We pray for all our vulnerable and all who love them, Lord. Be with them and guide them. Help us who are healthy to safeguard those who are more at risk by being the best stewards of health that we can be this day. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by saying together in one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you join us in singing, My Life Flows Over? Thank you. 
Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Go and be wherever you are in the presence of God who joins you continually, loving and serving with great gladness. Blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be and abide with you and with all of God's people this day and forever. Amen.